On the evening of July 4th, 2005, Lionel Keaton was standing outside his home smoking in Compton, California, when he seen a red Monte Carlo he knew belonged to Rock B, a known member of the Lotus Park Bloods, drive by his block. As the car sped by, one of the passengers stuck his head out of the window, which alarmed Keaton. Down the shopping fireworks near the back of the house, one of the party goers heard rustling noises coming from the bushes in the alley, but sadly failed to realize what was about to play out. He was out of the bushes, armed with AK-47s, and began firing over 20 shots at the group. Unfortunately, taking the lives of Mario Gordon and Corey Cartwright. Today, we'll go over exactly what played out in that deadly situation and several others as we address the Lewis Park Pyro Bloods. Being the first Power Room gang established not only means that this gang set the foundation for a lot of the Power Room members, but it also means that they have a huge attachment to the city of Compton and beyond. Yeah, this gang is considered the mecca of all Power Room gangs, and it's not for no reason. These guys are one of the most militant and violent gangs in Compton, California. From deadly OGs and hitmen like Poochie, intense gang wars with Serenios, Crips, and Bloods, insane drug operations and extortion schemes, this game definitely has a story to tell. But before we get into all that, y'all make sure y'all like this video and subscribe if you're part of the Danger Gang. Yeah. All right. Welcome to Cali's Most Dangerous. Let's get into it. You shot someone? That's what they said. Several times, that's what they said. Were they right? I don't know. Bullets don't have names. Sylvia Nunn earned her gang member stripes by committing crimes. Do you think it's right or wrong to get involved in stick-ups? To rob people? To it's wrong. I think it's wrong, but then it's called survival. You have to eat. You have to pay bills. You have to survive. So when you used to get, get used to pulling a trigger on somebody, it, it's not hard to pick up a gun and, and just shoot. You know? It's not hard after a while. It becomes easy, common. On the new July 4th, 2005, Lionel Keaton was outside his home in Compton, California when he saw a red Monte Carlo drive by. He recognized the car as Rock B's car, who was a known member of the Lotus Park Bloods, and he had seen the car before over the years in the neighborhood. As the car drove by, one of the two male passengers of Rock B's car stuck his head out of the window as the other passenger began to hand him a dark object. Kid became concerned that a neighborhood knew with his brother, Anthony Johnson, cousin, Mario Gordon, and other relatives. That night, Washington was celebrating this in the alley, then saw a young man from the neighborhood, Rustin Banks, walking through the alley with two of his friends, Ricky Cortez and Adrian Madrid. After that, Keaton saw Banks and his two friends put their hands in the air, turn around, and walk back through the alley they came. Keaton saw three African-American men come outside the alley from the bushes. The men were holding big guns, like rifles, and they began shooting. Keaton recognized one of the shooters who had a white t-shirt, who was Rock B, but he couldn't identify the other two shooters. Rock B fired his weapon around 15 times as Keaton ran and dove into the back of the house. The shooters then ran out the alley on Cascade Avenue and disappeared into the neighborhood. The shooting occurred shortly after 10 p.m which is about 15 to 30 minutes after Keaton saw Rod B's red Monte Carlo drive by. Washington was standing on the porch of his house when he heard the gunshots. Then he walked towards the alley. He saw Rock B, later identified as Christopher Hall, move between two parked cars in the alley with his gun in his hand. Keaton had also seen Rock B around the neighborhood over the last few years. Washington knew Rock B as a Lotus Park gang member and had seen Rock B wear gang attire and colors over the years. Anyways, after that, Washington saw Rock B aim down his AK-47 at a group of men, and as Washington ran into his house, he saw Rock B shooting at the house, with bullets striking the house and shattering the window. After the shooting stopped, Washington walked into the alley. He saw his cousin, Mario Gordon, laying face down on the ground in a place where he had seen Rock B aim down and fire his weapon. Corey Cartwright also was laying face down on the ground. Both men had died from multiple gunshot wounds. Janika Stubbs, who apparently was not injured, was laying underneath Cartwright's body. 19 cartridge cases were found at the scene, which were all fired from the same AK-47 or SKS type rifle. Keenan approached the sheriff's deputy at the scene and volunteered that one of the shooters was Rock B. Keenan provided a description of Rock B and described the other shooters as black male adults wearing dark colored clothing. 
Keaton also went to the station and gave a statement to another deputy about what he had witnessed, including an earlier drive-by and the identity of one of the shooters, Rock B. At the station, Keaton was interviewed by gang unit detectives, and unbeknownst to Keaton, the interview was videotaped. Keaton told the detectives that Rock B was the main shooter. In response to the detectives' questions, Keaton stated that he did not believe the shooting was personal. He explained that friends who gangbang and friends who meet Crips hang out at that location where the shooting occurred. There was no evidence that Keaton, Washington, or the other victims of the murders and attempted murders were in the gang. The audio taped interview was played on the jury and admitted to evidence. Keaton was in custody when he testified at trial because he had refused to comply with the subpoena. Evidence was presented that Keaton had told the prosecutor in the court that he was scared and did not want to return to his mother's home on Butler Avenue because gang members were harassing him and asking him if he was going to be at court. At court, Keaton did not that he had seen or identified any of the shooters and claimed that he did not remember statements that he had made to the deputies and detectives. However, the detectives prepared a six-path photograph and Keaton selected Rock B as a shooter. Keaton told the Texas that Rock B had been staying with his girlfriend on Castlegate Avenue. Keaton also offered to show the detectives where the house was located. He went on a ride with the detectives and pointed out the house. The investigating officer of the case interviewed Antoine Washington at the scene a few hours after the shooting occurred. Washington and Keaton did not talk to each other after the shooting. Washington told the detective that the shooter was Rock B, a member of the Lutus Park gang. And the day after the shooting, Washington gave the detective a videotape that he received from Adrian Madrid. Madrid is one of the young men who walked down the alley with Rusty Banks and Ricky Cortez right before the shooting. The video was recorded as they walked down the alley next to Washington's house. Rick could be heard on the videotape saying, it's Rick dog. After that, an unidentified person says, go back the other way, turn around and go back the other way. Right after that, the video captured images of muzzle flashes and the sound of gunfire. A little more than a month after the shooting, the detectives interviewed Madrid by phone. Madrid was staying in Mexico at the time. On an early morning of July 5th, 2005, LAPD set up surveillance outside the house on Castlegate Avenue that Keaton had identified as Rock B's girlfriend's house and staked out a red car that was parked outside the house. It was a red Monte Carlo. Deputies stopped and detained Rock B after he tried to drive away in that car. However, the weapon in the shooting was not recovered. During their investigations, the detectives discovered additional evidence which led them to believe that this was a gang-related shooting. They learned that the house where the shooting occurred had been identified as a hangout for another gang called the Butler Block Crips. However, the house was located in the Lotus Park territory and a rivalry had developed between the two gangs. In the end, Christopher Hall was convicted by a jury of two counts of first-degree murder and two counts of attempted murder, and Hall was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole, and Hall was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole, plus 90 years to life in prison. Yeah, rest in peace to Mario Gordon and Corey Cartwright. Sad to say, but in most ghettos, fireworks definitely ain't the only things being fired on the 4th of July. Yeah, that's just one situation though. If you know about Lutus Park, you know that they have a lot more of the deadly situations and storylines that they're known for. And if you don't, you definitely have to pay attention to this one because it gets deep. But before we get into all that, let's go over who these guys are. Who are the Lutus Park Power Bloods? One of the biggest celebrity crimes is the murder of rap legend Biggie Smalls, a.k.a. Notorious B.I.G., still unsolved 24 years later. Inside, and the driver shoots numerous times into the vehicle. There were plenty of witnesses, but no one could give an accurate description of the shooter. Biggie was killed six months after Tupac Shakur died in a hail of bullets in Las Vegas. I whispered the air, I said, how you feeling right now? He said, I'm feeling my best. I can't wait till March 25th. He was two weeks away from the release of the biggest CD of his life, titled Life After Death. For we known as the Lutus Park Hustlers throughout the 1960s, the Lutus Park Power Bloods are a predominantly African-American street gang located on the east side of Compton, California. But they're definitely known to put on other races. In fact, it's a well-known OG Mexicans from the set who put in a lot of work for the Lutus Park. Yeah, they have Latinos and even some Native Americans from the set. You just gotta be with the action, with the solo or with the fashion. You gotta bend the set with the passion. Bars, nigga. Lutus Park neighborhood stretches from Bullets Road to Atlantic Avenue, between Compton Boulevard and Rosecans Avenue, with them being north of the Hollyhood Pyrus, east of the M Street Pyrus, west of the Limehood Pyrus, and south of the Mob Pyrus. 
them being so close to one another means these guys start off having a close relationship with one another. This is why the Loose Park Pyrus have always been known for having gang related ties with Suge Knight, who was affiliated with the Ma Pyru. They were hired as staff and security for Death Row Records throughout the gangster era rap of the 1990s. This is why Tupac was heavily alleged to have close ties with the Ma Pyrus and even rumored to be a member and heavily affiliated with both gangs. Fun fact, Tupac actually filmed parts of his music video called California Love in their territory. Recently though, there's been rumors of a bloody war going on between the two, and we're going to elaborate on that a little bit later, so you guys definitely got to stick around for this one. Anyways, aside from going to war with other Crips, Bloods, and Serenios, the activities of Ludus Park range from murder, drug trafficking, robbery, extortion, and a lot of other insane shit. A big example is a Ludus Park member named Darnell Bolton, also known as Poochie. Why, why wasn't there any security inside the van? I don't know, maybe because like Big felt like he needed his friends around him more. Like, so you were sitting just behind Big. I had my window like halfway down, so I was looking out the window. You just see a car pull up on Big door, like pull up on Big door, and no words, just a single dude in the car, and he just fired shots inside the door. When we saw it, we just everybody got down in the car. Everybody bent down, and just hit the shots, just ringing in the car. But no window busted or nothing. Nobody screamed. Big ain't screaming. He didn't say, ouch. Oh, he got a gun. Nothing. Already involved in a number of shootouts and a lot of other dangerous situations, it's alleged that he was the perfect guy Suge Knight needed to assassinate the rapper Biggie Smalls. While in jail, Suge Knight allegedly paid 25000 to give to Teresa Swan to get to Poochie as payment for a hit on Biggie Smalls. And on March 9th, 1997, Biggie Smalls and Sean Combs attended the Vibe Magazine party at Peterson Automotive Museum in LA's Miracle Mile District. At 12.30 a.m., Biggie left with his entourage and two Chevrolet Suburbans to attend an after party at Steve Stout's house in the Hollywood Hills. Prior to leaving, the Los Angeles Fire Department closed the party early because of smoking and loud music. Biggie traveled in the front passenger seat alongside his associate, Damon D. Rock Butler, junior mafia member, Lil C's, and driver, Gregory G. Money Young. Combs traveled in the other vehicle with Eugene, Gene Dell, Tone, Stevie J, and driver Kenny. The two SUVs were also trailed by a Chevrolet Blazer, carrying Bad Boys record director of security, Paul Offord, and also driven by an off-duty Inglewood police officer. At 12.45, the streets were crowded with people leaving the museum. Wallace's SUV stopped at a red light on the corner of Wilshire Boulevard and South Fairfax Avenue. Two minutes later, a dark colored Chevrolet Impala between the years of 1994 and 1996 put up alongside Biggie Suburban. The driver of the Impala, a black male, rolled down his window, drew a 9mm steel pistol, and fired at the SUV. Four bullets hit Biggie. After that, Biggie's entourage rushed from the Cedar Sinai Medical Center, where doctors performed an emergency surgery. But unfortunately, he was pronounced dead at 1.15 a.m. Wallace died at the age of 24 years old. Now look, till this day, the murder hasn't been officially solved by the LAPD. But several sources have confirmed that the Lutus Park Pyro member, Pucci, was the killer. And even if there was officially a case to open on Pucci, it wouldn't matter. Because unfortunately, he was also killed back in 2003 through the gang violence. Anyways, we know a little about Lutus Park, but trust. We haven't even scratched the surface when it comes to addressing these guys. And no, these stories get a lot more crazier. But before we address all that, we gotta get into the danger rating of the Lewis Park Pyru Bloods. To say their son Kelly was beaten to death by up to a dozen death row thugs. <laughs> Nearly two years ago, Kelly had joined friends at this death row party following the Soul Train Music Awards. It was held here at the El Rey Theater on Wilshire Boulevard. According to police, witnesses say Kelly, a 28-year-old construction worker, little league coach, and father of three children, was knocked to the floor, kicked and beaten with metal chairs. Glass from broken beer bottles embedded in <laughs> his face mangled all because of a perceived slight against someone from death row. The Deuce Park Pyro Bloods received a danger rating of a 9.5 out of 10 based off of the gang's long history of violence in Compton and beyond. Yeah, at this point, you know about Poochie and B-Rock. 
But trust me when I say they have several other members who have brought several other insane stories that have made the game one of the most feared of Compton. Not only that though, this gang has been in the headline for robberies, gang injunctions, and several other homicides. Yeah, pull up to Little's Park thinking these niggas is Marks, and all you gonna see is Sparks, followed by Dark. Bars, nigga. Now that's just my opinion though. Well, if y'all went higher or lower, y'all let me know in the comments, man. Let's have a conversation about it. Also, do y'all got any crazy stories about these guys? Any close calls? Y'all also let me know about that as well. Anyways, let's keep with these stories because we got a lot more shit to get into. History of the Ludus Park Pyro Bloods. The Ludus Park Pyro Bloods have a huge attachment to Compton's history, but also the power as a whole. They were formed and established in the early 1970s in Compton, California, but the gang history goes back way before that. And because of that, before we can get all the way into Ludus Park history, we have to address the origins of Paru in general to fully understand the game. Yeah, let's take a deep dive into Ludus Park as we continue to address a few more prominent members. Paru Street has a history of grooming a lot of gangsters, but in the block's earlier days, it was widely known for its hustlers. This is why they were formerly known as the Ludus Park Hustlers. Anyways, Known as bank robbers back in the days, the Bourne family, along with Mickey Blue, Clarence Glendale, Nani Hall, and Victor, were all known as the Power Boys in the early 1960s. And this block had nothing but families of brothers who all got along. So the street was down there a big family who did everything together. But by the late 1960s, the birth of the Crips brought a lot of turmoil to the local groups. The Crips targeted these independent organizations because they were not a part of the Crip Alliance or any alliance and therefore lacked the strength and numbers that the Crips had and they were easy targets. This put the non-Crip members at odds with the Crips. Some needed to be done to protect themselves. So the Hustlers and non-Crip affiliates proposed a meeting to figure out the situation for the Crips. The Lewis Park Hustlers, along with others, met on Power Street and during the meeting, an alliance was finally established. In the fence, bloods like the Five Nine Brands came along, followed by Paru, and from the jump, these guys stood on their own and went to war with damn near anybody who went to their neighborhood, especially the Cribs. The bloods identity came after an incident played out between Jody Crawford and Billy Flowers. I'll leave a link about what played out. It's a dope interview by Paru OG Marv, where he goes in depth about it, but long story short, it gained the Paru's a nickname, The Roosters. The Roosters is red, so naturally, they started calling themselves the Bloods. But to take it a step further, many Paru's began to use burgundy flags in addition to red flags to separate themselves from the rest of the sets in the Blood Alliance, essentially turning Paru into a card of their own, which is a smaller alliance of individual gangs within the gang's alliance itself and the groups within these alliances are known to put their gang's progression and protection before others. For example, you have the Inglewood family gangster Bloods along with the family Swan Bloods who are still Bloods but belong to a group of their own and have their own politics and means of operation compared to the umbrella of Paru. Anyways, the Ludus Park Pyrus officially became Bloods in 1971, making them one of the first Paru factions ever established. Yeah, Ludus Park Pyru was one of the first Pyrus with Ludus Park being a stronghold for all the other Pyru gangs in the area. The name was so attached to other gangs that if you went to prison back then, and if you was from Lion Hood, you said Ludus Park Lion. If you was from Mob Pyru, you said Ludus Park Mob Pyru. So it's said to say these guys were the predecessors to a lot of the newer gangs who established themselves at the Ludus Park. These guys are the mecca of Pyru as a whole. And to this day, this gang is known for having the most militant members under the power umbrella, having members organized from youngest members to the oldest. The little gangsters, the members age from age 8 to 12. A few ranks over that are the YGs, or the young gangsters, followed by the OGs, or original gangsters, which came after 10 years of banging. Then it's the double OG, which comes after 20 years of banging. And lastly, the triple OGs, which is established after 30 years of banging. And from the little gangsters to the triple OGs, this gang's rivals, with the exception of a few which I'll address a little bit later, all remain the same. Rivals of the Little's Park Pyro Bloods. When it comes to rivals of the Little's Park Pyro Bloods, they have a long list of them. They have close ties to the M Street Pyro's, the Lime Hood Pyro's, the Hollywood Pyro's, and the Cross Atlantic Pyro's. And other gangs like the Black Peace Stones, the Harvard Park Brims, the East Side Rolling 20 Outlaws, the Van Ness Gangsta Brims, and the Fruit Town Brims. And that's pretty much it. But the rivals include the Kelly Park Compton Crips, the Santana Block Compton Crips, the Ducky Hood Compton Crips, the Neighborhood Compton Crips, the Fruit Town Pyrus, 
and they have a long lasting feud with Serenio Games and Compton, such as the Compton Vario 70s. The crazy part about this beef though is during the early 1970s, the Ludus Park Pyro Bloods and the Vario 70s were closely aligned, but the influx of drugs in Compton in the 1980s caused a lot of tension in the area as gangs were pushing for more drug territory. This caused tit for tat shootouts, which eventually led to the death of CK Ville, who was a prominent member of Ludus Park, which sparked an all out war between the two gangs. And these days, they're still in each other's necks. They also go out with the Compton Vario Chicano gang and the Compton Vario Largo 36. But the beef that needs to be dissected most is the one with the Mob Pyrus. Beef with the Mob Pyrus. On July 7, 2006, Tony P was sitting in front of his friend's house with his friend's brother LC when a black SUV pulled up in front of the house. Jose Mario Gonzalez, a known Pyro member, got out of the passenger seat of the car and asked, Hey homie, where you from? And LC replied, We don't bang. Right after that, Gonzalez responded, Well, this East Side Mob pulled out a gun and began firing at the group. The bullet passed three to four inches away from Tonic's head as she ran behind the building. While hiding, she heard footsteps approaching her. Then she heard Gonzalez return to the car and shut the door. Lenny J, Tonic's brother, was inside the house across the street. Through the screen door, he saw a dark truck pull across the street. He turned away from the door, then heard shots a few minutes later. Lonnie then ran back to the door and saw Gonzalez get into the truck. He was holding a metal object that looked like a gun. After that, Tonic called 911, but deputy sheriffs did not arrive until the next day. On September 2006, Tonic identified Gonzalez as a shooter from a collection of 35 to 45 photographs. Gonzalez's family lived right across the street from Tonic, and Gonzalez was friends with Tonic's cousin. In addition, Tonic had seen Gonzalez before at her family's barbecues. Detectives put out a warrant for Gonzalez's arrest, and he remained on the run, but fast forward to the morning of September 29, 2006. Lonnie Beverly was at a liquor store in Linwood, California, when he heard gunfire at the purchase counter. Immediately, another man who walked to the store dropped to the floor. After that, he looked up and told Beverly, you got hit. A bullet or a bullet fragment hit Beverly in the throat near his Adam's apple. Beverly survived, but unfortunately, he was murdered shortly before the trial. However, a police detective was parked close to the liquor store when he heard four to five gunshots nearby. He drove in the direction of the shots and saw Gonzalez and Kyan Lawler sitting in the car in front of the store. The two men were looking at the store. When they turned away, the driver, Gonzalez, saw the officer and looked surprised. Gonzalez then drove away from the liquor store. As the officer followed, he turned on his car's patrol for red lights to attempt the traffic stop. Gonzalez kept driving though. He drove across the double line southbound into northbound traffic, then turned eastbound against westbound traffic. Yeah, Gonzalez was out of there and he didn't stop at stop signs or traffic signals and drove close to 50 miles per hour in a residential neighborhood with a 25 mile per hour speed limit. After a short pursuit, the car pulled up into a large apartment complex and Lala got out. The officer put out a prescription on Lawler on his radio and continued to follow Gonzalez in the car. Eventually, Gonzalez turned into an apartment complex and jumped out of the car. Gonzalez ran through the apartment complex with the officer in pursuit, then gave up when his path was blocked by another officer. Meanwhile, the officer searched for Lawler. A resident in the apartment complex told the deputy sheriffs that she saw a man in blue shorts digging in the ground and burying something. She showed the deputy the spot where the item was buried. The deputy kicked away dirt and discovered a gun and a sock. After that, deputy sheriff searching the area found Lawler. He was still wearing blue shirts and had streaks of mud or dirt on his arms and hands. Although Lawler was walking, he was out of breath and sweating. A criminalist examined the bullet fragment removed from Beverly's neck and the gun that was buried in the apartment complex. At trial, he opined that the bullet fragment that came from the gun had been fired. Gang detectives concluded that Gonzalez was a member of the Eastside Mob Pyro Gang and Lola was a member of the Ludus Park Pyro Gang. Gonzalez used the moniker Ghetto Boy and Lala used the moniker Rambo. According to the detectives, the Mob Pyro and Ludus Pyro Gang members are allies and it's common for their members to commit crimes together. Detectives also identified Mob Pyro's primary activities as narcotics related crimes, assaults with deadly weapons, murders, and robberies. She stated Ludus Park Pyro engaged in similar activities. Based on a hypothetical mirroring of the facts of the July 16 incident, detectives opened that the shooting was committed for the benefit of Ma Paru. The Gonzalez act of yelling out Eastside Ma Paru let the victims know that they were in the gang territories and the gang was responsible for the crime. In the end, the trial court sentenced Gonzalez and Lala to a term of 125 years to life in prison. 
I told that story just to give an idea of the relationship between Ma Piru and Ludus Park Piru over the years. Ludus Park and Ma Piru have an unpredictable, confusing, complicated, love-hate relationship. One day they'll love each other and the next day they're at each other's neck. The crazy part is that Ma Paru was actually formed out of Lewis Park and the two gangs used to have an alliance together under the moniker of Looters Mob. And like already mentioned, the gang's ties were so close that in the 1990s, Sugar allegedly paid a Lewis Park member Poochie to take out Biggie Smalls. And by the 2000s, due to many drug and gang politics, the two gangs started beefing hard. This led to the death of several members on both sides, including Davey Dwayne Dudley, who was also known as Brim Dave, who was a known member of Ma Paru. He was with his girlfriend when he was shot and killed by Lewis Park Paru blood. He was shot 16 times and his girlfriend was hit four times. It's sad to say, with deaths occurring on both sides to this day, I don't see an end to this beef anytime soon. Hopefully I'm wrong, but what do y'all think though? Can it be peace? or at least neutral standing between the two, or is it fuck each other for life? Y'all let me know in the comments, let's have a conversation about it. Prominent figures from the set. When it comes to prominent figures from Ludus Park, they have more than a few members who have made the game what it is today. But during my research, I found a list of members who are no longer with us. A few of them include Clifford Ray Johnson, also known as Paul Ru Ray, or Squirrel, who was just 18 years old when he was fatally stabbed on Cookridge Avenue in Compton, California on February 10th, 1973. His death marked the first Piru to be murdered. Williams Walker, also known as Chin, was killed by Jerome Jordan, also known as Snake, for allegedly robbing one of his homies. Also was Poochie, who was killed in 2003. Lil Joseph Thomas, also known as Bartender, who passed on December 4th of 1976, and OG Don Turner, who was fatally shot near Ludus Park on December 29th, 1985. Dennis Earl, Kenneth Brown, and Eric Darnell Grant from Kelly Park County Crip were charged for the murder. Also, is C.K. Vail, who was one of the first gang members to seek revenge for Tupac's death. Sally Vail was murdered by some CV-70s in 1998, and his death started a war between Ludus Park and the CV-70s. Yeah, rest in peace to all them, and y'all let me know in the comments about any members who are no longer with us. Let their lands live on, man. Let their lands live on. They also have a long list of members who has helped put them on the map. A few of them include China Dog and Bartender, who's resting in peace, Big Herman, Time Bomb, Part Time, Ricky Pitts, Stanley Pitts, Savage, Ick the Tick, Dre, Randy, Big Chin, Big Ann, Shorty, Renee, Volcano, Cash, Gangster Nate, and OG Timo. George Williams, also known as Ponytails, was also a prominent figure from Lotus Park. Also as Poochie, who was widely remembered to be allegedly the killer of Biggie Smalls. Sylvia Nunn, also known as Rambo, was a high-ranking female associated with the Lotus Park Piru, and it's rumors of her doing dirt. Shit, sometimes even more than her male kind of parts. Yeah, Rambo, she probably didn't beat up your mom or your dad, shot at him, or she probably even robbed him back in the days. But recently, she was giving back to her community and teaching the youth to step away from gangs and step toward success. Matter of fact, she started a nonprofit organization called Sylvia Nine Angels, which hosts food drives, backpack giveaways, serves as a fuel pantry, does food drives, helps guys lost souls back into the right directions, and a long list of other activities which benefit Compton. Nun said her inspiration came from epiphany after seeing her homies and loved ones die through the years over gangbanging. Nun was also featured in History Channel's Gangland, From Grow to Gangster, where she gave her personal take on what it is to be a female gangster. She also gave some dope interviews over the years, and she gave a lot of gain in each of them. But unfortunately, Sylvia passed away in 2022. My apologies for not having an official date of her transition. I looked up high and low to the internet, but I couldn't find anything. But either way, rest in peace to this queen. She definitely left a mark on the community. When it comes to rappers, Ludus Park have had a few over the years, like Trick or Trick. Cool, kind of reminds me of like a California 50 Cent. But y'all check them out and y'all let me know what y'all think. Also, it's Park Boy. But his most recent release was from seven years ago, so y'all let me know if he's still dropping music. Anyways, y'all let me know if any other members who are no longer with us, man. Let their names live on. Also, any OGs or rappers I might have forgot to mention. Current state of the Lewis Park Piru Bloods. Compton is the birthplace of a lot of established gangs that have had a heavy impact on the gang culture. But it's also the location to where gangs have literally formed and have reputable members but quickly disappeared. Some down there overnight through the gang violence and going to war with each other. But when it comes to the current state of the Lewis Park Bloods, today, they remain one of the most active gangs in Compton. Not only that, 
This gang has grown to the point to where they have members in different states as well, like New Jersey, New York, Baltimore, Texas, shit, even in different countries as well, like Canada. But y'all let me know if I'm missing your states, or even your country for that matter. Anyways, that's it for the Little Spark Pyro Bloods. You guys got any crazy stories about these guys? Any close calls? Y'all let me know in the comments. Also, did I miss anything? Did I get anything wrong? Y'all let me know in the comments. Let's have a conversation about it. If you guys like this video, you definitely gotta check out the Lime Hood Pyro video or the Denver Lane Bloods video. They both dope videos, and y'all make sure y'all go tap into those. You guys don't forget to like and subscribe too if you got bitches. Y'all stay safe and dangerous out there.